are such an asshole. I am amazed at how much better mood I'm in when I get to do videos on what I want. And they've been building up. Like I've one of these days, I may even do um some deeper ones because it's just so much faster to do a video than it is to write it out. Because I got like blog posts, but I'm never gonna catch up to them. Never been working down this house too long. So anyway, um, I'll be taking this video and two previous videos and making one big podcast out of it, uploading a SoundCloud in case you guys didn't want to uh, deal with my face. You don't want to look at my ugly mug. That's fine. So the final one today is going to be the Church of Saint Red Pill. Uh, now, this idea has been floating around in my head for quite some time. And the uh, reason is because I was brought up in the church. I was the son of a man of the cloth. Dad was a pastor, and I got to see uh, the behind-the-scenes action, uh, which would make a very horrible after-game. Behind-the-scenes church, after the sermon. All these lame sports shows. The pre-pre-game, pre-pre-post-post-game pre-show. The Irish that they could do that with the sermon, and it'd be equally as interesting. There's one thing, two things I noticed, many things I noticed, but the one thing I noticed was two things about church and religion, all right? One is the main reason of church is for people to deal with their mortality, to deal with the afterlife. Uh, and this is a human condition. This goes back to the before time, before time, way back in the day, before Christianity, before anything. And all it is is people like, dang, I hope I don't die. And like, hey, what's there's there's a movie called How Lies Began. It had Ricky Gervais in it. And it was just where people could only tell the truth. <laughs> oh, first half an hour has been good movie overall, but the first half an hour is brilliant. But it's how religion was formed. And his mom's passing away. He doesn't want his mom to feel bad. He says, oh, this would be this place where we're going to meet. And, and dad's there and everyone else is there. And, and then <clears throat> the whole, wait, 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 you know about this place? He's like, well, no, I was just, and he could, you know, I, I guess he could lie. That was the, so he could start lying. But religion, first and foremost, well, first and foremost, is there to form as a government. Do what we say or you'll burn in hell. So obey. So that was the <clears throat> societal purpose of religion. But the individual purpose of religion is so that you can wrestle with your mortality. So that you might have the convenience or the luxury of believing in an afterlife. And I am envious of those of you who do have that. Which is why I never really slam on people who are genuinely religious. Right? Uh, the second purpose of religion is to give you some kind of value or purpose in living in life. Not necessarily living for God, or Yahweh, or Allah. Certainly, though, that's in the religions. But uh, you look at Leviticus, number some of the Older Testament um, chapters. It's it's rules, laws. There's wisdom. Any any religious text is do this, don't do that. It's all wisdom passed down. Part of that wisdom is how to butcher animals when animals do not eat. But a lot of it is, what is the point and purpose of life? Why should you Why should you live this way? How are you going to live? It's not just do what I tell you, follow these 10 rules, or there's a guy with a pitchfork that's going to stab you and you're going to burn all the time. Oh, hell, that's what we got when we were three or four years old. Believe in the pedophile-looking long-haired guy with the robes, or you're burning hell. What's hell? Can I play with my truck? No. Worship this man. I, where is he? Here's a picture of him, a rendition. He's awfully white for a, mid, white for a Middle Easterner. Okay. Otherwise, then I can I play with my truck? No. Not a lot of fun in the Wisconsin Senate. If you got a choice of Lutheran churches, I strongly recommend against the Wisconsin Senate one. Uh, anyway, where's it go? Oh, but it, it, beyond don't do this because I said so, you're burning hell. There's also some wisdom passed along you know like, don't do this and here's why and handle the wife this way and why and then deal with the kids this way and why but also life purpose and you know, why why are you living <clears throat> beyond christ and so in the before time i'm going way back uh you would go to church or synagogue or my, whatever you'd have your rituals you go there as a family repent your sins whatever <clears throat> And the church ended up not only becoming government, but a lot of times the community is how things form. Y'all, we all believe in this guy in the sky. Not that guy. There. He's the wrong guy. Oh, foolish you people believing in that guy in the sky when obviously it's our guy. 
Uh, but the point is that it gave you point, purpose, agency, reason, and living in life. And a, and a how-to manual. Like, here you go. And so that's fine and good, but then what if you don't really believe? What if society mocks or scorns? Or, as is the case, what happens when your religion, whichever one it may be, and I don't think Christians are the only ones here, but we're going to be focusing on Christians. What if your religion, your church, abandons the teaching of the religion? And this is where it, it's it's been fun, guys. It's been real fun watching all the Christians like fragment. You know, it's like, oh, how hard is it? Guy on the cross died for sins. Don't make it more complicated. Oh, we got to make it complicated. And seeing all the different, the Unitarians, the Episcopalians, <clears throat> Church of England, uh, the um, the original split back in the olden days. Um, Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, and the Catholics. And <clears throat> then to see how things change. Ah, it's not really Christ. It's, it's communism, like your current pope you got now, that guy. We can have female teachers, or teachers, not teachers, pastors. Oh, yeah, you can be, now nah, nah, you can be gay, now nah, you couldn't before. Ah, I was wrong. You can't have female, yeah, you can. My favorite, though, <clears throat> I think it was called St. Mark's. Don't quote me on it. I want to say it's Episcopalian. Right on Hennepin Avenue, just north of Highway 94, before it turns north in the Lowry Tunnel. And they had the baptizing of the animals. This is like 20, 25 years ago. And I, and I was already like, no, not Christian, not, no. Until someone comes up with a pure I'm out. But I still observe, and I'm like, wow, it really means nothing. It's just a money-making operation, isn't it? Because you're baptizing animals. All right? And now I find it very interesting because I have a libertarian perspective. Like, yeah, there should be female pastors. You should be gay, whatever. But the irony, especially pertains to Christianity, is like, well, wait a minute. Your biblical text said those are all wrong and not dues. And now you are doing and allowing it and you're the leader of the church? Well, then what does that say about the veracity of all the other things said in the Bible or your particular religion? <clears throat> Riva, South Dakota. Atham, look it up. It's, it's a, a post office with a gas station and there was a church. Reverends Bob and Margaret something. It was Lutheran. I even remember the Wisconsin Synod back in the day. This, this is like the footloose, you know, fire and brimstone, you're all burning in hell. And even if you're on God's good side, you'll you'll at least get a third degree burn in hell, maybe not death, but um, this is like no dancing. There was no dancing allowed in, in the Wisconsin Synod. Now they're allowing dancing. Well, if you're wrong about that, what else are you wrong? And you guys all can't, all oh, these pastors, right? No, right, 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 right. We have a monopoly and a lock on everything moral and right. And we know everything. Who do you know? Because you just admitted you were wrong. <clears throat> and so it's very interesting to see in this particular case, Protestants uh, further fragmenting and not pursuing Christ, but rather marketing and profit to become everything to everyone. And I would also argue for those, let's say you really did believe in, in Christianity, the teaching of whatever, the Bible, and you happen to be gay. You would say, all right, I'm, I'm not agreeing with this. It's just one logically. Okay, uh, uh, I should not be gay. I can't control it, though. That's that's how I, I was born. I sure as heck ain't going to become a pastor. <laughs> you know, love the sinner, forgive the sin. And you're like, okay, I, but I, I believe in Christ. I want salvation. And you'd have to reconcile that. I'm sure many <clears throat> millions probably of, of religious gay people do. The situation I don't envy. <clears throat> but you wouldn't go so far as like, yeah, I should be a pastor. Because then you don't, and that's what you see happening now is that churches and sects and all that have abandoned Christ. They have abandoned the religion, and now they've essentially become clubs, just social clubs. Now, I knew this way back in the before time because you could see it. The vast majority of Christians were not Christian. Everyone's getting divorced. Everyone's having affairs. Everyone's not raising the kids. <clears throat> 
And for the most part, you go there for a social call. Guys go there to pick up tail and trim. Girls go there to find a stable guy. Everyone's there because they feel like crap, you know, whatever, but that's not about believing. Christ was like a distant third. That was, a, it was always an ulterior motive. This was corroborated then. <clears throat> Bethel and Crown College, two Bible colleges in the Twin Cities areas, when I dated a handful of girls from there, where they used, oh, they were mean. Just, you think, oh, nice church going girls. Maybe this will be more set. No. They were catty. They were mean. Why? Because it wasn't about Christ. It wasn't about the religion. It was that they could use and also abuse the religion to lord over men. And I've seen that happen where girl wants complete control. Religion provides a great tool to basically oppress your husband or oppress men with, like holding them up to Christ all the time. Now, how that pertains to the red pill. I shall connect the dots. Since an increasing percentage of Protestant faith, and we could also include Catholic as well, I don't know about the other religions, has been abandoning the true teachings of Christ and then pursuing other things like marketability, profit, um, political ideology, other things have been able to creep. So already, if you are a legitimate Christian, there is really no re you're already got a bad taste in your mouth. But now, again, marketing and money to get more butts in the seats. Now they start going feminists. Now they bring in a new religion. And it could be Easter Sunday. They'll talk about females. They'll talk about feminists. They'll talk, you guys got your oppressed and women, da 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 da, because it's all marketing. We have long abandoned Christ. This is a dead branch of Christianity, and it is now theater. That's what it is. It's feminist theater. Now, not every church is like that, of course. I'm sure there's some church out on the prairie in the middle of nowhere. I thought it would be Ereva. Apparently not. <laughs> that still is fire and brimstone, forgiveness, sin, all that kind of things. Oh, what's it say in this book we got here? It says this. Oh, I think we already got it established. But for the most part, the church has abandoned Christ. The church has abandoned the teachings of Christ in the Bible. And now they, the, the pastors are getting wise and they are playing to make money. They're playing to get butts in the pews. And part of that is now bringing in, <clears throat> uh, uh, what's it called? The, the parallel, not parallel, but uh, an, another ideology, another religion of feminism. And this is where the men have now left because we have two new uh, uh, things that, well, we don't have two. We have one new thing, one old thing. And a lot of men are going to church. One, it's not about Christ. Everybody's turned against me. I'm to blame for everything. Oh, leftist politics in general. I remember going to a church one time. All the guy did was rant against rich people. <laughs> so it, there's no reason for guys to be there, but that doesn't mean they still aren't religious, aren't penitent Christians, and don't want to have a relationship with Christ. They still want that. So here's, here's what's great. There's this thing called the Bible. And it's got all the things, it's all, all the stuff in there. And you don't need to go to church. See, in the before time, only, the, only the, the clergy could read. They could interpret the Bible. And now you don't need that. You're literate. You got the Bible right there. Go pick it up. Whichever variation you want. Okay, you start reading through it. So already, if, if you believe that that word came from God, that's that's straight from the source, man. It wasn't dropped off at Amazon. It wasn't shipped to Walmart. It wasn't put on a display. Nope, <clears throat> you got it right from right from the the source, right from the printing press. God gave it to you. All right, so you could read that. If you're a reasonably smart man, you could figure out what the words say. But more so, and especially in light of the root beer float crisis, where we're not allowed to have fellowship, everyone keeps oh, fellow. I had this idea for podcast pastor. We need fellowship. We need fellow. We need to be together. We need to be together. No, no, no. You're hostile. You're a toxic environment to men. Most churches are nowadays. It's not even about Christ. And you hate men. Just admit it. Or you want to profit off of them. Whatever. <clears throat> that fellowship is gone. Long gone. Oh, run your, your food shelves for the poor people who fake believing in Christ for a sandwich. Run your, your rehab thing. So for a free sandwiches and free lodging, all the heroin addicts. Oh, yeah, I believe in Christ. Oh, whatever. Just give me some food. It's cold out here. Right. Uh, <clears throat> but there, there's Christ is not there. Right. 
but it is in the Bible. And these guys don't have to, they don't have to attend. There's no reason to go through that because there's no, also no fellowship as well. There's no fellowship among fellow Christians at modern day churches in America. I don't know what it's like in other Western nations. I don't care. Right. So men now have their own Bible, but <clears throat> if you wanted fellowship and we're not allowed to meet because boy, socialism is a much more powerful religion nowadays, isn't it? Driving them to the internet. And now you can get a sermon. On, this is why I want to do podcast pastor. Good sermons every, every Sunday. Couldn't find a pastor. Oh, that's that's not plagiarism. What is it? Simonry or simony. <clears throat> oh, making money. Oh, 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 I can't do that. Oh, I don't know how this internet thing works. All right, never mind. So you could go <clears throat> tune into your pastor. You could be online and have digital fellowship if you want. But now the guys don't have to go to church and get lectured and berated. The guys don't have to say, you ought to go marry that single mom. And All right, you got to do more for your wife. No, they don't have to. They can have a relationship with Christ with the Bible. And they can have a, a pseudo synthetic fellowship, at least online. And you're not letting them attend church anyway. Because when, <clears throat> when does the Epsilon variant come out? Let me know when we all got to go back to our caves. <laughs> but here's where the red pill I guarantee you is going to supplant and replace church, not for the belief in the afterlife in Christ. <clears throat> that is going to be a personal relationship with the individual man, his Bible, if he reads it or not, and whatever sermons or digital church he happens to consume. But the other part, the instructional part in the Bible and other religious texts as well, because Rollo has a book out so to cover all this religion because feminism creeping into all the main religions. The instruction that has been lost this time, lost time tested wisdom, whether it was secular or religious, that's been gone. That's been poo pooed. Some about submit to, to the husband. Is that ever uttered in churches anymore? What about it's better to live in the corner of your roof than be under a nagging wife? Is that in there anymore? Is that taught? Are women's obligations taught in? Are men told how to handle women? Or do we even get to that? What about handling chip? Man, head of house. Is that even in there? Well, if the if church isn't going to do that, <clears throat> if modern day American churches aren't going to do that, the red pill most certainly will. And not to lessen one's belief in Christ, but that's basically it. I'm a sinner. Christ died for my sins. Feel like a piece of crap. Uh, uh, not apologize, ask for forgiveness. <clears throat> Thank God I and, and, and believe in the, in the afterlife. That's, that's pretty much all you need. And fall on the rules of the Bible and, and for whatever spiritual guidance, but real world practicality, if it ain't going to be taught in the churches, guess where it is? The church of St. Red Pill. And if you wonder where men, where are the men? Men aren't going to church. Men aren't going to sermons. You know where they are? They're at the church of St. Red Pill. And you think it was, <laughs> it's the opposite of the, the trope is the guy falls asleep during the sermon, wakes up. There's the pastor shaking everyone's hand. Oh, good sermon. Good sermon. They're rough. You're like you were sleeping. We could hear you all snore. But instead of falling asleep in a regular old boring sermon or a sermon that lectures you and sermonizes you about bad men, bad women, great, rah, rah, rah. Men are tuning in at least three times as much to a red pill sermon about practical real world advice. Not because it's religious, because it's practical. Because where Christian churches are failing to provide leadership and guidance and real world advice, we're taking up the slack. Of course, my domain is finance. Rolo's got his thing. Rich has got his anti-fun, no classic cars, uh, no no ice cream, no pony rides. You know, he's, he's more fire and brimstone. He's the ER pastor of the Red Pill Church. But they're giving the men what the churches won't and used to. Real world practical advice, which is why when it comes out on audio, Rolo, love to tune in to Rolo's latest book on the religion in the Red Pill. But if you want to know where the men are going, there is a new church in town because the relationship with Christ or Yahweh or Allah because <clears throat> I'm sure you Muslims have a little bit of a, a little bit of a feminism problem too, eh? Uh, they got their relationship solved. They got that taken care of. They don't have the leadership. 
and you pastors, holy ball is wonder, Batman. Y'all remind me of uh, 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 Gran Torino with uh, Clint Eastwood. And there's like the 26 year old, what behind the years, baby boy, kid pastor. Like he's going to tell the 80 year old Korean vet what to do. All right, that's that's all cute. You guys came out of seminary. That's great. You never touched a booby. That's great. You're going to give us and you're going to give real men advice, huh? Are you? Oh, that's real interesting. Oh, about how to handle women, huh? No less. Oh, that's rich. That's real rich. Tell me, tell me more. <laughs> and this is why, and maybe I figured it out. Maybe, maybe this is where the donation comes in because it's very church-like. I even made a joke with my dad. He was trying to understand how, how the, the internet, the YouTubes work. I say, it's no, you should know it, dad. He's like, how's that? I say, I go up, I spew a bunch of BS and people give me money. Just like you being a pastor. <laughs> he, he got the joke. He found it funny, but it's kind of like that. Like, isn't it? You're supposed to lead the flock or Jesus was the shepherd, but you, you, is it a pastor? Like this is the flock. You're kind of supposed to kind of guide him through the valley of woe, the valley of evil, the valley of dark or whatever. Some kind of valley where bad things happen. Are you supposed to lead them? All right, yeah, Jesus. Okay, yeah, okay. Die for sins. Yeah, cross. Oh, okay, key man. How about how about the real world life application? You ain't providing it. Oh, you're baptizing animals. Hey, single mom or extravaganza, come here and take care of some other guy's kid. <clears throat> you're the problem. Yeah. Oh, shut up. And so now. You're making it more atomized for men's relationship with Christ. They're having a personal relationship with Christ. They got the Bible. They got the internet. They can find any pastor they want. That's why I wanted to have podcast pastor, but, you know, pastors lack entrepreneurship. <clears throat> and they got, the, they got their soul covered there. But they sure as hell aren't going to go into your Marxist, leftist, corrupted propaganda where it's all about money and wokeness and politics and anything but Christ, anything but living a Christian life. Don't worry, we'll take your money. We'll take your listeners, we'll take your viewers. Heck, I've even thought about like going to the guys like, hey, what if we put together a red pill Bible? <clears throat> like we get that really thin paper and you have Rolo's books in there. You got a couple of my books in there. We throw Ryan's in there. You know, just, just some of the key ones, you know, just throw a, a Bible. Book of Rich Cooper. Don't have any fun. No sports cars unless they're foreign. Uh, be grumpy. Ride a boat. Uh. Uh. If, if there, that might be more the uh, uh, the revel. What was the dark one? What was the was it? Maybe Rich would just be in charge of the Old Testament, kind of like uh, fire and brimstone, death. I'm a vengeful God. Grow a beard. <laughs> oh. But anyway, that's it. And if you want to see growth, you want to see where people are going for camaraderie and uh, 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 what is it? St not stewardship. What was it? fellowship? You want to see fellowship? It's on the internet. It's Red Pill Fellowship. Because we're picking up where you guys left off or completely abandoned. And I'm not saying you're going to find Christ or religion or anything like that. That's why I like Beckloff, because Beckloff, he's a good Christian. That's why I'd be desperate to find just a red pill pastor who could deliver me a good sermon every Sunday and give me the MP3. I upload it. There's a little tithing plate. Bada boom, bada bing. I take half. Um, half? You're crazy. No, no, I'm not. You see? Never mind. I won't go through the whole shtick. <clears throat> But that's it. If the collection plate's a little bit light, I don't know. We're getting super chats over here. Why? I presume because we're actually helping out the men. This is this whole half of this population. Let me introduce you to this half of the population. They're called men. Okay, now, they're like women, but a little different. Let me explain. I don't know where that marketing came from. I don't know. Like, we're just going to lower the standards to let everyone in. And, so, and if that's the case, why don't you just become a social club? What's the, there's nothing wrong with social clubs. What, what's the difference? Tell me the difference now between uh, the Eagle Social Club and any modern day American church. Just go in there to socialize. 
the belief in God is a mere formality, isn't it? I mean, you could just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I believe in God. Oh, is there a potluck? Can I meet some rich guys? Oh, I hope I get laid. <laughs> uh, anyone want to talk about Christ? I, hmm? Anybody? Bueller? So there it is. And really, am I optimistic? But man, we are raising so many people wrong and so lying to them. Uh, about just the real world, but then there's also the spiritual world. You know, religion plays a very important life in people's. I believe you need to have a religion of some kind, but man, you keep, you keep pushing those boys away. They will find Christ. They will find Allah. They will find Yahweh. You can't burn the books. You can't burn the Bible or the, the Torah or whatever Quran. It's there, right? For the real Christians, the real Jews, the real Muslims. But the, the fellowship, don't worry, they'll find out. And how to live their life, don't worry. We're reconstituting that. If not, we already have. Just keep, all we need you to do is keep yelling at men, blaming them for problems, treating them second class, and uh, abandoning Christ. And then we'll, we'll cover the, the other stuff beyond the personal relationship with Jesus. All right, <clears throat> super chats or the donation plate. See, that would be instead of hymns at the Church of Cappy, we'd play 1970s sitcom songs. <laughs> Maybe even go 90s. Oh, I hear the blues are calling, toss silent and scrambled eggs. Uh, you guys like the thumbnail? <laughs> uh, Taiwando, two, uh, two euros. Are you confirming that Rolo is a cult leader? Yes, yes, he is the cult leader. <laughs> oh. Instr instrumental man, new guy, five bucks. But Cappy, I have high EQ. Yeah, okay. The Church of EQ. Whatever you got to believe in, guys. Whatever you got to believe in. There's more honesty and morality and uh, value in believing in, in a legitimate old school religion. Whether, I, whether I, don't, I don't believe it. I have more respect for someone who is a true religious man. Like EQ, careerism, education, me. The, the Church of Me. Oh my God, doesn't that explain it? Everyone's about the church of me. Oh, what a boring church. I don't need to say my own damn praises. Oh God, I'm so bored of me. I don't, I've been with myself for 46. Hey, look, <clears throat> well, the few Christians out there, the Beckloff, what happened to Clary? Did he screw up like the Beatles and say he's bigger than Jesus all the time? It was the title of a live stream. No, actually, listen, go back and listen to the whole thing, Beckloff. You'll see I'm, I'm actually quite pro-religious here, legitimately uh, religious. <clears throat> uh, -da 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 Bexy Mike, two bucks. Ah, yes, that book with the stuff about the past. <laughs> That's a good one. I got to use that on my dad. I mean, yeah, that book with the stuff about the past. Okay. I'll get a look. Okay, I'll get a look. The one I had to read a billion times over in case the 48th time I read it, the Jews didn't escape Egypt. You know, the walls didn't come down around Jericho. Oh, God. Uh, Thomas Landrum, our accounting agent in the field, five bucks. I love that joke you tell your dad. What, the one about how how's my relationship with Jesus? I say, great, we went to the strip club at a grand old time. Is that the one? <laughs> Mexi Mike, five bucks. You hinted at it in your uh, Conference on Masculine Excellence 2 teaser. More and more men, particularly bachelors, that are not the initial top 20 physical tall extrovert. Yeah, um, I'll be uh, speaking. <clears throat> if you're interested, email me uh, or just go back a couple of videos. Uh, Donovan's holding another Conference on Masculine Excellence. This one's going to be in Dallas. October 21st through the 24th. Speaking of church-like events, we'll have various many pastors, including Ed Lattimore. I can't wait to meet him. I haven't met Ed. Uh, I will be talking about what our bachelors to do with all their millions. 
technically trillions uh, because a lot of us aren't having kids. We're not going to have an heir apparent. And it doesn't necessarily mean your nieces and nephews should inherit the money either. A lot of, well, not a lot, a handful of diver deserving um, charities need it too. And some other things that I'll go over. Obviously, I'm not going to give it all away. Mexi Mike, five bucks. Exclude we with we can influence game money physics. We should learn, build, and then we'll now become the chaste gender, chaste gender who's selective about intimacy. <clears throat> okay. I don't know what you mean, but Taiwando, two bucks. The book of Ma man apocalypse by St. Richard Cooper. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be good. I'm not kidding. It'd be good to have like a bunch of the books all consolidated into essentially a red pill Bible. And then someone says, oh, I want, you know, I want it here, here. It's all here, here, all here, here, here. Watch 2000 years from now to be the action, like it'd be the most popular religion and it'd be butchered. It'd be all this pomp and ceremony and singing and seance and incense and guys with funny hats. Although who knows, maybe everyone will wear a Ford hat and crappy sweatshirts. And now from the book of Cappy Cap. Golden Hures. Chapter 5, verse 17. Subsection C. Mexi Mike, 10 bucks. As gals used to have to be about who they open their legs to, there'll be the single mommies and then there'll be a few quality gals who get the prize marriage for not being an ex- 304 looking to be saved post 30. <clears throat> Is that all that you could, didn't you have more characters you could have used? Dreiser rules, five bucks. Wives be submissive has disappeared from the Catholic church. I wanted my first wedding, but she refused. I wanted in my first wedding, but she refused. That should have told me something. <laughs> Your first, how was the second and third? Oh, <sighs> That that I'm real curious to see the success rate of millennial Christians. I want married. I want to see the success rate. Because that was back in my day when I was dating. They're younger, obviously. I want to see how that turned out. Cause that if they go to Christian college, guys, just just that's a hard pass. Hard no. Run for the hills. Eric Burns Marsh, five bucks. If I join the cult of Cappy, do I have to give up shrimp? No. Um you could do whatever you want. Just give me money. That's it. There's no judgment here. We're at judge-free zone. There are no rules. It's more spiritual and being proud about yourself and forgiving yourself and self-love and having no standards because standards are a social construct. Boppity boobity boobity boo. Actually, there's already an entity called that's called the Democrat Party. So they got their own religion. Just follow that. <laughs> Nothing's ever your fault. Uh, uh, Burns Mars. Mm. Competent man, five bucks. Just came out at 115 Eastern Standard Time. The Fed faculty soared by 69.2 billion to a new record high of 1.375 trillion, the highest on record. Everything's awesome. Money. <clears throat> It shows you how stupid people were in the past. Why didn't someone think of just printing off more money? See how well it's working? I don't know why someone, they'd be the most popular president ever, like if politicians ever. Joe Biden will go down as the world's best president ever. Had we just thought about printing off more money, think how, it was such a simple solution sitting in front of us the entire time. <clears throat> I'm surprised no one came up with it before. Or tried this before. Hey, you know what else? Everything should be free. Let's try that. Oh. Taekwondo, two bucks. Who would be the Judas or St. Paul of the... Well, Judas, the traitor? The traitor? I don't know if we really got a traitor. And Judas kind of felt bad and killed himself after. Judas, who stabbed us in the back? Who stabbed us in the back and went totally woke? Do we know anyone? I know people left, like Rolo became religious. Not Rolo. Um, Roosh became religious. <clears throat> I don't know if he necessarily 
disagreed and did a 180 with everything he said in the past. St. Paul. Well, it's St. Paul went out and batted for the team, right? St. Paul went out there. Who went out there? It's got to be someone young. St. Paul is a younger guy. I don't know, maybe a, a Napier? TJ, some young kid? I don't know. St. Paul will arise. Don't, these are not my problems. Who was the pissed off apostle? Who was the really angry? I'd be the grumpy apostle. You know, I have the 12 dwarves. You have grumpy. The, there has to be a pissed off apostle. The very angry, doubting Tom, maybe doubting Thomas. Maxi Mike, five bucks. Instead of a robe like the Pope, you could sport the diversity flag as a cape because the judgment free zone thing, not the old flag, but the new flag. What's the new flag? Is there a new diversity flag? Why do they need a new one? What was wrong with the old one? <clears throat> They'll never be happy with like, here's what we believe. We've made our statement. Now we're going to go live our life. And uh, we have a group that meets up here and we support each other. It'll never be the happy new flashy. Anything but to go back home, look at myself in the mirror and realize I have no value because I'm afraid of doing real work. I have beliefs. That gives me value. Look, a new flag. <clears throat> Try some rules, five bucks. The second wife is a unicorn. Seriously, you declined to post a picture of you said, I just sheer respect your words. Yeah, we don't need to share pictures of ladies. That's um, It's one thing like the gals... Uh, if she like if, if she's how can we she wants to model or she's like no i'm okay but if you're married older people i don't know how old you are but just just there's no reason to to do that competent man five bucks out of today the ceo of pharmaceutical giants moderna says that even younger people will have to get the vaccine uh boost shots at least once every three years oh okay okay have fun all right, that's it. Um, let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear great red pill thing in the sky, thank you for the empirical wisdom and empirical data and the hurtful truths. Let us go forth and adhere to truth and reality. And don't kiss no fat chicks. Amen. All right, see you guys later, tools.